Okay, Carrie, uh, call out the miles per hour as you accelerate, and uh, when you hit 70, get ready for a little bump. Okay, we're rolling in three, two, one. Carrie accelerates. Like some horror movie monster, the plow lurches into life. They're aiming for 70 miles per hour, but the car is struggling to pull the plow up to speed. Carrie only reaches 40 before Grant has to brake. Okay, I'm gonna brake. Three, two, one. Crap. The plow doesn't even <laughs> slow down. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, man. Well, well, let's, uh, let's see if I guess that the... would be 100% carnage. Tori, you're 100% correct. I think that that rear wheel that's been giving us problems locked up again, and we're dragging that. Um, I fired the actuator, and, uh, <laughs> well, just kept right on trucking. This is how things usually look after a Mythbusters experiment, not before. Oh! I just sliced them. Well, I'm not happy. Uh, we weren't able to get the truck to stop. Our steering mechanism has been ripped off the truck, so I'll have to re-weld that back on. We've destroyed two road barriers, and tomorrow we're supposed to do the experiment. I'm thinking we're gonna build a wall of sandbags. At yeah. least that might be our best bet to stop this thing. You mean, so you spent three days on a remote control trigger and we're gonna put a wall of sandbags in front of it? All right, this has been like the most troublesome myth I think we've ever done. The curse of the snowplow strikes again. We dragged the truck and left a nice burn of rubber because one of the wheels does not turn at all. So then we tried to get the tire off. Everything's rusted shut. So Tori had to make this giant lug wrench, and then there was another tire behind that. So they just cut it off. Then it turns out that the entire truck sank to one side. And that was before the brakes failed. Uh, hold on. Aren't we supposed to be busting a myth here? Can a snowplow blow a car off the road? So far, what they do know is that the pressure needed to flip their chosen vehicle is 0.21 pounds per square inch. But when Carrie tested her air pressure gauge, not even Jamie's truck could push anywhere near that much. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The snow plow is kicking our butts. There's no way we're gonna have time to test to see how much wind the regular plow is pushing. Okay, well, I say to save time from here on out, we build the largest plow we possibly can. I mean, something ridiculously large that's, you know, as tall as a cab, but still drivable on the road. If that can't flip it, nothing will. We had a cut to the chase. I like it, let's do that. The plow's been behaving like Frankenstein's monster. Now it's starting to look like it too. They weld a steel frame to the existing plow and attach sheets of plywood. They hope the added surface area will funnel a strong enough blast of air to flip the vehicle. Meanwhile, just for a change, Grant's fixing the brakes. We uh, had a brake system failure yesterday, and um, uh, Matt, our snowplow expert, came in today, had a look at it, and he thinks that we weren't pressing down the pedal far enough. So what I've done is welded up a new bracket, and I've pushed it in. With that done, the truck is ready to roll again. Time to see if the monster plywood plow can push enough air to flip the test vehicle. The metal missiles will be towed towards each other. For maximum safety, the cable's been threaded through a system of pulleys so the tow vehicles can head away from the track and away from danger. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one, go. The plow extension will increase drag, meaning it'll be even harder to tow the lumbering beast up to 70 miles per hour. Nevertheless, they gun the tow vehicles. The snow plow's moving. Okay, the snow plow's moving. And the target vehicle's moving. Great. Nice. Now there's no turning back. The plow hits 60 miles per hour, faster than it's ever gone before. Will the vehicles cross paths or crash head on? They pass like jousting knights, 
the distance between them just a few feet. The target vehicle doesn't so much as tilt. All four wheels remain firmly on the tarmac. After everything that's happened, finally they have a successful test. Now Grant just has to bring both vehicles to a gentle stop. Okay. Okay, this, total devastation. This, this looks That's... like a bad thing, but it really isn't because Why is it not a bad I'll thing? I'll tell you why. We have the snowplow driving at top speed going across the the road here and the car passed it and it didn't get blown off the road. So we show that you cannot blow a car off the road with a snowplow. The superplow is nothing but smashed plywood and twisted metal. It looks like urban Dude. destruction. I bet this is going to be a really good shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Gary, it is. The brakes obviously failed again. Or did they? Grant's got a confession. I forgot to uh, activate the brake. You uh, didn't activate the brakes? Well, not, I activated it after <laughs> crashing to the barrier. <laughs> See, I knew there was something up because See? that went right through. Yeah, well, uh, that was cool. Yeah, that, I think that's why my snowplow looks like that. Oh, yeah. Strangely enough, no one appears too upset. I'm glad Grant didn't hit the brakes because there's nothing better than seeing that truck destroyed because it's given us so many problems. I'm happy. What is this? This is the door from the snowplow. We decided to keep it. Why? I don't know, because we had so many problems with that snowplow. We should just melt it down, but I guess we're going to keep it as a reminder. I take it it wasn't the easiest myth to bust. Yeah. <laughs> no. We did everything we possibly could. We used an unfeasibly large snowplow, the biggest plow that our expert concedes he'd ever seen. Also, we used a really small, lightweight car. And we did get the car to pass the snowplow about four to six feet apart at 60 miles an hour. Nothing happened. It didn't, Nothing. It didn't flip. So that would make this one pretty easily... Busted. Busted? Clearly busted.